Well, howdy diddly dandy there, chums, to Zai, captain of the Steves, and today, chums, for you guys in the viewerverse, I'm back inside of No Man's Sky, and you can see here, I've got myself this a lovely runner, the Starborn Runner, which is the ship that you get for completing this expedition, Redux. Now, the actual Redux itself, it's not difficult. It's not difficult, there's a couple of badges to be aware of inside of this, but other than that, not much is going on here that's going to cause you any sort of problem or issue. Now, what I would say is on the first planet, you can quite easily scan six plants. Remember, you can scan oxygen plants and you can also scan like the zinc plants or sodium plants and also the little blue ones that give you a boost. So you can scan those and also the hazardous flora. And there's a couple of varieties of hazardous flora on that planet. So you should be able to get all that done. And there's also a mission to scan all of the wildlife. So like to scan, like I think there's like eight wildlifes. So eight wildlifes. Now there is water on the first planet. As long as you can find yourself a lake, I think you're gonna be able to do that on the first planet. There's about five sort of like easy creatures that are in the air and on land. Then the rest you can discover in the ocean. But yeah, that one could be quite easy to do before you've even left the first planet. Now, when you do leave the first planet, you know, there is also the mission to shoot asteroids. Something I'd also suggest perhaps doing while you're on the first planet is hit on up a few knowledge stones. There is a later mission to actually learn alien words, and it's a lot easier to do if you've already learned a few of the words from knowledge stones on the very first planet. There it is right there, astrolinguistics. So if you've hit up, say, I don't know, six or seven knowledge stones on the actual planet, then go to your first station, you're going to learn all the words before you even left the first area of space. Before you leave the first area of space and after you've shot your asteroids, you might want to go and visit the hot planet and that's in the very first system. In fact, there's two hot planets. Take a photo of one and also there's the frost planet inside of the first system. Take a picture of that. Now, you're not going to come across an airless world, or at least I didn't come across an airless world until I went through the black hole. When I went through the black hole, the system that I appeared in after the black hole had an airless world. I think I've still got some footage of me getting a picture of that. I would say this is probably the easiest milestone to miss. And as I went through the rest of the playthrough, I don't think I saw any other airless worlds. So hopefully you're gonna see this one. Here's that footage. Now I'd imagine that all of you guys also have your base on the first system. So hopefully it's locked onto the same system for black hole for you. So let's have a look at the discoveries page. Not airless. Not airless. Not airless. Not having much luck with this airless world for our photography mission, are we? Alright. Is that our black hole? I think it is. That looks freaking mental. It's more like an orange hole. Out of the way, boulders of space. I got a black hole to go into. Here we go, people. Huzzah! And away we go. So yeah, people, hopefully you're enjoying this playlist. I've already mentioned before. If you are, hit that like and subscribe. If you've already done that, share this video with friends. I'll see you at the other side. Okay, so hopefully that footage helped you a little. Um, also, this one here, One Man's Treasure, Recover Free Lost Objects. This isn't free relic sites. You don't have to go to free relic sites for this one. There is a later mission to dig up a relic. But anyway, this one here is just digging up three caches on the planet. You can do this on the very first planet as well, people. So take heed of that one. When it comes to the relic site, when you get to your first rendezvous point in rendezvous one, it's going to be at a colossal archive. If you've got some nanites on you at that stage, hopefully maybe you have from scanning creatures and scanning everything make sure you upload it you might get enough nanites to print a chart if you print a chart from the rendezvous colossal archive chart printed machine it's going to take you straight to a relic site so you can dig up that treasure Okay, when it comes to expanding your base one of the things that you need to do is install a ceiling light and I had to go back up to the Nexus to get the blueprints for a ceiling light. So when you're inside of the spatial anomaly in the Nexus, whatever you want to call it, make sure you get the blueprint for the ceiling light so you don't have to make that audious journey back up to the station or the spatial anomaly. 
and also you can build yourself a wonder projector there's this jump through the black hole and then build a wonder projector i think they've done that on purpose because the black hole takes you miles away from the rendezvous if you try to get to the rendezvous back from that black hole you're going to be doing about 50 light year jumps it's freaking insane how many jumps you've got to do to get back to your rendezvous path after you've managed to go through the black hole, after you've photographed your airless world, go to a station or to the spatial anomaly and walk back to your base, put down that wonders projector and continue your actual journey from there on in. Otherwise, you're going to set yourself up to fail massively. Talking about being set up, things to take with you on this one is inside of your exosuit or not the exosuit but your actual multi-tool and your starship you're going to have loads of busted technology yes you can fix it with basic resources but if you take say about 15 repair kits you're going to be able to cut that massively down in fact probably even render it out completely just by fixing all of those slots and it really does help you early in this expedition because you're going to be limited for storage capacity and space at least you can install all your technology modules and they're not going to take up space in your actual exosuit storage other things to take with you perhaps take some salt because you do have to craft a, a neo um uh, nautilus bay so you can scan for your crash freighter also you know those things on the side of those projectile things under the ocean is it cytophosphate or something like that you collect those three nodules around that sort of like barnacle thing might be an idea to take those with you at least then you can just chuck down the nautilus bay or better yet take a nautilus bay with you so you can just throw it in um but yeah or it's to install the scanner actually it's actually to install the scanner not the nautilus i think they give you the nautilus bay for free so yeah it's the scanner technology for your nautilus in fact pre-package that take a nautilus scanner with you pre-packaged that will help and also maybe the um, a personal refiner mark ii so at least if you haven't brought the salt with you you can just make it using oxygen and dehydrogen on the go okay so one other badge that was a little bit tricky is this one right here xenophile so you have to take a picture of an exotic life form on one of these exotic planets now that i came across a few exotic planets in various systems and some in the rendezvous systems but yeah i've got some footage of the one that i actually photographed and i'll put that up for you now okay it may take a couple of seconds to actually render in or appear but there you go that's what you're looking for a little red dot and these little creatures like that the weird jellyfish looking things there we go and that's the exotic life form found located right up someone over here uh it's not that one hang you Okay, it's under there, and claim badge. On something else that you might want to consider taking with you is your idiom drive, people. So your idiom drive will let you jump to a blue star system. You can just you know, uninstall it from a ship that you've got inside of your legacy save and throw it into your expedition. But there you go, people. That's that's kind of the hardest ones there, and they're the hardest ones in the, the final phase. Oh, and while you're up in the spatial anomaly, you know, getting your ceiling light, the opposing side, where you can get all the recipes and blueprints for different bits and bobs that you used to have to unlock inside of facilities, make sure you unlock the one for the gel, the um, unstable gel because you're going to need that later on and you're going to have to craft it and that's another journey back you do have to go to the spatial anomaly a few times to talk to nada and polo so if you have missed this it's quite easy to do you're going to get your seed and light and get your your unstable gel then perhaps but other than that there's not any other badges inside of here that really caused me frustration the only one that did massively cause me frustration was this one and getting the sentinel interceptor to spawn in the planet that i was shooting sentinels on the sentinels kept spawning miles away and my badge and my wanted level kept dropping down and it took me near on an hour to get it to give me the path to a sentinel interceptor and even then when i came up with a harmonic brain for some reason it sent me to a harmonic camp to do a load of stuff that i didn't need to do Anyway, I've got a full playthrough that you could play along if you like with me on this. If you do want to go to all the planets I went to, complete it in the way I did, it took me roughly about three hours. The video itself I've edited and cut down to two hours and it's all the bits that you're going to need. Uh, I'll put a link up there, hit that up if you want to do that. But that's all my best tips for this expedition. There really wasn't much that's going to cause you any sort of pain on this one. It was fairly straightforward. 
So yeah, the only one that I would say wasn't straightforward was finding that airless well to take a photo of, uh, which I've already given you the footage for. But other than that, I think this one is a walk in the park. It's a bit of a boring walk in the park, but it's got some amazing, amazing rewards, including the Starborn Runner ship that you saw me standing on at the start of this video. And also you get the Atlas Scepter face shield and also wingsuit, which is freaking awesome. So there you go, people. That's everything for you. Salute to Mondo. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.